Good evening. Welcome to the ZBA meeting. It's Thursday, April 11th. Um, the four of us present today will be voting if it comes to a vote. Uh, we have no minutes to review from the last meeting. Um, so the only thing on the agenda today is a continuance of the Deerfield Industrial LLC, five industrial drive west, South Deerfield, Mass. Applicant request a driveway approach from site of Atlantic Furniture Incorporated, located five industrial drive west to Route 116. Driveway to be used to alleviate truck and vehicular traffic at industrial drive west and provide second means of ingress or egress for emergency vehicles. So at this time, anything you'd like to add? We all receive um, by email and hard copies from Heritage right, well, we surveys. We were before the board before. And the, and the board asked us to do two things. Mm -hmm. There was a concern about the wires yes. with regard to this uh, new curb cut entrance. And Heritage says the wires are 17 and a half feet. And we compared that to the wires in Industrial Drive West. And there's, a, uh, there's an island at Industrial Drive West, but some of the wires are 18 feet high. And on the easterly side of that entrance, the wires are 16 feet high. So we're basically in conformance with the wires Industrial Drive West. As we indicated before, after this incident happened the first time, they did come and they did raise the wires, mm -hmm. and this is the confirmation and proof of that. The other issue was safely entering and exiting, and uh, Heritage did went back to DOT, and the standard is 590 feet when it's 50 miles an hour, and this is more than 590 feet, and there's photographs of that, and indeed it's actually more visibility in this area than it is at Industrial Drive West, which is closer to a rise in the road. So I think we fulfilled both of the requests that the plan that you made the last time we were here. So what you're saying is this satisfies the mass DOT, this information you gave us about? Yes, it does. They reviewed the DOT counts. We're not adding any counts. Just a question of where the traffic is exiting. Mm -hmm. And it's more than in conformance with the DOT site regulations. Mm -hmm. And what happens, I see here, it says in your letter, additional traffic volumes onto Sunderland Road, 116, would be generated, would only be generated by a facility expansion or change in operation, neither which is taking place. Correct. Um, and if what there was to be an expansion or something to? We have no plans to expand at all. There's absolutely no plans to expand. The traffic counts indicate that there's somewhere in the neighborhood, I think, of 13,000 cars going, going past that facility. So there wasn't a small expansion, but it's basically filling the site. There is no plans to expand there. So we would have to revisit this if there was an expansion. We'd be happy to have it contingent upon revisiting it if there is an expansion. Okay. Frank, in your documentation over there, is there ever any official letter from Mass DOT that they approved this? No, no, I don't have any. I don't think any of us received anything from directly from Mass DOT, just from Heritage Service. They approved the curb cut. Well, have we we have have you provided that in writing? Yes, of course. Can I have a copy of that? Sure. And I guess the question would be, why has not been provided to the board already? It, it was, was provided to the board. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to find it because uh, we provided that. That was in, with our initial. Sorry, I had to catch up and watch it, listen to it, watch it on the no, YouTube no, channel, no so I'm, I didn't have that. Do you have that yeah. in front of you? I, I no, no, I, I don't. I think I, think I, I might. I, think I, might. I, think I do. Here okay, as long as the board's seen something on Mass DOT letterhead mm -hmm. that they're good with it, that's my question. Yep, let me, let me, let me show you a copy of it, okay? Okay, thanks. If this has already been in the record, we'll keep this copy in the record that they have. And then here's another. There are a couple of different things. You may proceed with the work. January 4th, 2018. And here's this one, too. 
Yeah, he should see all of that mm -hmm. if he really this wants to see. Okay, thank you. And you weren't here the first time, but we did pro we did provide that letter, and the board was concerned about two things. In addition to that letter, they were they were, they were concerned about the wires, and they were concerned with the site. I did lines. hear that in the meeting. Yes, when I reviewed. Yeah. And so that's what we've done is through Heritage, we had them go out and measure the wires, and we had them go out and do the sight lines. No, we wouldn't be able to be here without GOT approval for sure. I understand. I just want to see what they had to say. That's all. Absolutely. I can write down their names again. We you get your name again, sir? Could I get your name again, please? Tom, we need your name. I believe it's Tom Lesser. Tom Lesser. Tom, Tom Lesser. Yeah. For the record, oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Would a card be helpful? No, usually no. we just have people introduce themselves so the folks mm -hmm. viewing at home know sure. who you are, you know. Happy. Anything to add? No, nothing. To add. Nothing to add. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any, oh, I'm sorry. Did anybody else have any in questions? Your, in, say your no. name again, please. Matthew Plotkin. Okay. Got it. Any questions, Rich? Thank you. Stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Good evening. For the record, my, my name is Felicity Hardy. I'm the attorney for uh, the Deerfield Economic Development Industrial Corporation, and with me is Paul Olszewski. Um, we have not been provided whatever the materials were that were submitted electronically from heritage surveys. So I'm going to, my remarks are just going to be based on my knowledge of heritage surveys. I'm a real estate lawyer, so I know their work. They are very fine civil engineers, but they are not traffic engineers. And my understanding of where this was left with the board uh, originally and then with the continued hearing was that the board was looking for a traffic study and heritage surveys, as I say, fine civil engineering firm, but they do not have the capacity to do a traffic study. And while I don't have what it ever, whatever it is that they uh, uh, provided to the board, uh, I, I don't think it could be a traffic study. We are delighted to hear that the um, height of the wires that that problem has been fixed, that's, that's great news. Uh, but in the absence of a traffic study, uh, it is our view that um, the applicant cannot demonstrate that the new curb cut is safe. I think it's interesting also that whatever the materials were that um, the applicant has referred to, they observed that, or it seems like they were observing that there's going to be no additional volume that's going to be generated by this, uh, by Atlantic Furniture's use of the premises. So once again, I question the need for a second uh, means of egress. It doesn't seem as if there's any problem with the existing means of egress, so I don't know why we need a second means of egress. And then finally, just I think it's just common sense, and I think the board is certainly capable of exercising common sense, that a second entrance on 116, which is a busy road and has a high volume of uh, traffic going at a high rate of speed, it's just not a safe thing to do unless the applicant can demonstrate it's safe. So for all those reasons, we think that the application for the special permit should be denied. Questions? No, I, I, I mean, I think that, you know, years ago when there was, you know, three or four hundred people, multiple shifts, and Mr. Oshesky's testimony in the last hearing when I, we, when I reviewed it showed, you know, there was a substantial amount of additional traffic there when those factories were full. So, you know, compared to the current use, but I don't think, you know, that's kind of a moot point to me. I mean, I did 
review the law and talk to Mr. Kalashevsky, I feel as though that this is, you know, the basic, you know, the driveway was put in and there was a complaint and now it's before us because, you know, Dedick and the tenant or the owner don't, aren't on the same page, you know, and now here we are, you know, trying to determine, you know, no, it wasn't a traffic study what they submitted. This is a traffic study. There's two different things, but do we need a traffic study? I don't know. I mean, I don't think so. Mass DOT approved the curb cut. I mean, I talked to several people in town that said that that was the original curb cut when my father told me that. When they worked for Consolidated Tobacco, when they put 116 in there, that was the original curb cut for that property before it was the industrial park. So, you know, is there, did Mass DOT approve it on existing? None of their paperwork says that. And then what, what Heritage Surveys did was basically measure the distance and the sight line there and said it's conforming to the Mass DOT standard. So there was no official traffic study done that I can see, similar to what Cumberland Farms had to do with traffic count, mm -hmm. time of day, all that different things. But that's usually a planning board issue. And I believe they declined jurisdiction, right? The, the only thing I'd have to say is on the original application, uh, Dick said that based on the, the zoning laws or whatever, it would require a traffic study. Mm -hmm. And for a new development, didn't say anything about new development. He just said required based on the zoning. If you look at the second or th whatever the second or third page of the application, would require a traffic study. I don't have it in front of me. Well, I might say that two things. Number one, Dick also told me that the fire department thought the curb cut was a good idea in terms of safety, in terms of fire engines getting to the back of the building. Well, I remember that from when I watched watched the meeting before. And it's and it's not adding any count to this road. And, and, and can I, I think it's I think it's more dangerous when you have cars piled. I'm not going to sit here and debate with you folks. Yeah. I'm just I'm going to tell you something right now. That that property has been serviced by the the the, the two drive the, the access roads on the south side and the north side. It worked fine for all these years. Trucks got in and out. You know, fire, whatever. Uh, I, I mean, it comes down to you could quantify it this way. Yeah. If someone wants two sidewalks to their one front door, is that their prerogative or not? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but we're talking. Then we're talking a third here. Well, well, whatever. I mean, right. do I think? You know, do I know why they put the driveway in? I don't know. I mean, right. the question before me is: Is it a safe? or unsafe driveway, and do we have grounds to deny the driveway permit based on safety? And when the road is straight, and Mass DOT says that it's in conformance with them, how do I say no? Just because I don't think you're gonna use it, I have to say no? And I say because a, tra a traffic study that was required by your building commissioner, building inspector, whoever, whatever title you wanna put. So that's on, the which question for the chairman of the board. Are we, do we require, does the town of Deerfield require a true traffic study, not, does it meet Mass DOT standards? I, I, don't, I don't know exactly what, what you were referring to, but maybe you were referring to when we were looking at the bylaws? It states right in, in Dick's, in the application, it's it states, state, state, I don't yeah. honestly know. Let's look at it and see if it said a traffic study it said or a traffic safety study. is under consideration. Because mm -hmm. Mass DOT issued, I can uh, get my copy. issues curb cuts in places, you know, when people buy and sell property, and there's a lot of different reasons. And, I don't believe that they come to us to ask for curb cuts. My chance. Okay. Yeah. Here. Mm -hmm. We're looking at bylaw uh, 5320, actually. 5322. It lists things that you need. To consider when mm -hmm. giving uh, granting a special permit, right. the and the one that we're discussing right now is the traffic flow and safety print, uh, comment, comment the including comment. parking and loading. Right. The one they so we do have to take into consideration traffic flow and safety. I don't see where it says we have to have a, a formal traffic study. I didn't see that either when I looked but, it over. Um, are you looking at the application that was provided that so that they submitted? No, I'm not. I'm not oh. addressing that. I'm talking the actual application that was presented to to okay, uh, let's, the let's Dick Kalashevsky. That's what I'd like you to reference. 
I don't have it in front of me. It was on the I've second got, page. I've got it. Okay, I've got it. I'm just going to look through it. Oh, we can, and the other thing we can do is close the hearing and talk amongst ourselves mm -hmm. if you want to. We get to that point. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm going to grab it. You know, tell you what, I'm going to go run and get my copy. Letter you're referring to in the application. You want to check it out? Mm, I'm looking. Okay. Let me see. see in the meantime, down. I'm just going to. Give me a second. I, I think this is what he's referring to, but I'm oh, not going to sit here. Is this it here? Right here. This is what I'm looking at. So bylaw 5322, which was the one we were just referring to, apply, apply, traf tra apply, apply tra traffic safety. Okay. Right, which we're doing. Right. But does it say that we're required to require the applicant to do a formal traffic study? There's a difference between taking traffic safety into consideration and requiring an applicant to do a traffic study. Okay. Right. No, it doesn't say that. Right. It doesn't say that. Because it would be unreasonable for us to require someone on Captain Lathrop Drive but, to put it to do a traffic study. Right. You know, okay. so. Do we need to close this? Are we still oh, gathering information? Do you have anything else to add? No, I, I, the, yeah. only, the, the, the genesis, my recollection of the genesis of the traffic study was that at the first hearing you asked for one. So mm -hmm. that's why I thought right. yeah. the applicant was going to produce yeah. one. And, and they did, they just didn't give you a copy of it. No, we didn't. Well, well that's, I don't that's believe that that's a, a traffic full traffic study. study. That's, no, no. That's just documenting that they're in the, these what they just, built is these in are just compliance. Site triangles, is all they are, and right. speeds and site triangles. Well, right. It is what it is. Yeah, right. Right. Um, and I would just add that the chief uh, chimed in. He added to his public comment, he mentioned something about a traffic study in his comment. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw that in the file. Mm hmm. An update from that, that was received in the last week or so. Okay. Yeah, from the chief. Okay. He called me and told me he had supplied that after I sp after I spoke with him, because I had found that. Um, we should probably just read his comment into yep. the record. Is yep. that it right on top there? Yes. Okay, so this is from Chief John Pachurik. Yep. Comments on the proposal. Longer line of sight compared to current driveway, farther away from intersection points, rendering safer. All other concerns should be addressed in a required traffic safety engineering review. 321-19, Chief John Pachurik. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm wondering whether or not um, when um, the chief and the DOT were looking at the longer sight lines, whether or not they 
were assuming that this was a substitute for industrial drive. I just, I, I would be a little bit concerned if we were sort of talking at cross purposes and that what, what they were approving was something to replace industrial drive as opposed to supplement industrial drive. So I don't know if the materials that you have in front sure. of you speak to that or not, but uh, I just raise it as a point. For my, I mean, I'm just a layperson, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but from my point of view, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense that adding a second entrance on 116 would be safer. I mean, maybe it's safer because if you discontinued Industrial Drive West, there are longer sight lines from the new curb cut. I mean, that raises just a whole nother basket of laundry, as far as I'm concerned. I, I'm not, I, because I don't have these materials, I, I really don't know. Maybe they are longer, but so is, right, are, are we saying then that the longer sight lines from the second entrance and having a second entrance altogether makes that a safer way to enter and exit Atlantic Furniture's property that just seems really counterintuitive to me. Well, it says that they want to provide a second means of ingress. Okay. So that, to just, me, means they're not going to eliminate Industrial to Drive. Right. Well, that's owned by, and Industrial Drive West is controlled by the town, mm -hmm. down to the cul-de-sac, which yep. DDIC owns and controls. Okay. Okay, thank you for your time. Thanks you. Okay. Okay, so before I, I close the meeting, I just wanted to offer the opportunity if you wanted to withdraw without prejudice uh, the application. Uh, it has to be unanimous. There's only four of us um, before we close the meeting and go into discussion. No, we don't want to withdraw the application. And you have a curb cut by law says that it has to be safe. We prove that it is safe. We have DOT permission to make it. I can't think of any reason we, you ask us for two things. We provided them. I can't think of any reason to be denied. Of course, that's your discretion. Right. It'll be up to you and we'll take well, our from, from remedies. Well, from what I'm hearing here at the table, I guess the, the the sticking point is whether what you provided with us is enough. Well, I'm not sure what else we could provide you. We, we, have a, we, we have a DOT. We had DOT looked at it. They said it was fine. They knew there was an existing existing driveway there. They said the new driveway was fine. Um, the wires are obviously not an issue. The sight lines are even greater, even according to your police chief, than the other uh, entrance. So it's even safer than the other entrance. There, there's no reason that it wouldn't be considered safe. It doesn't have to be safer than the other entrance. In fact, this has to be a safe way to enter and exit. And you have a situation where it, in, it improves public safety by having fire access to it. Um, you usually get a ZBA approval before you, the work is done though. Isn't that customarily the procedure? Not to make the curb cut and then come to the board and we we because didn't we we didn't realize we didn't realize that it was an issue when it was pointed out to us by the, by your building inspector. We immediately came to the board and discontinued use of it. You didn't we, think a curb cut onto a state road was going to be a problem? Uh, we thought that was DOT approval. We thought that DOT was the one who approved that. Once they approved it, we could proceed forward. We didn't realize that there was also you had to come before the ZBA and get their approval. Hmm. But as okay. soon as we heard that. We immediately discontinued use of it, made our application, and haven't used it since. Yeah. After the wires came down and the cones were put up, and we put up the cones immediately because yeah. because your building inspector said not to use it anymore. Right. I mean, EverSource was there, and they raised the wires immediately. Yeah. Okay. So I op offered you the opportunity. Sure. Okay. So it's seven twenty-five. We'll close the meeting to the public. Discuss amongst ourselves what we want to do here.
So I guess what we need to figure out here is if what we were provided with is substantial enough. Well, to meet our burden of safety, I mean. Mm -hmm. That's what we're covering ourselves because right. there has to be safety is paramount when we're granting a, right. um, a variance. So you feel this is safe? Well, I feel, you know, based on, you know, the other comparables in the area, you know, the entrance to exit to Mass DOT, the entrance and exit to South Deerfield Water Supply District, the other two industrial parks, I, I mean, I think it's got a much better line of sight than coming off Pine Street, mm -hmm. you know, onto 116, and then the next intersection would be Long Plain Road slash South Main Street. Um, you know, so, so that, to me, is the neighborhood comparables. Um, so obviously Pine Street, South Main Street, uh, Long Slash Long Plain Road, you know, those are Waitley intersections, but, um, you know, probably have vast more traffic than what's going to be coming out of there and that the industrial park has less traffic than what it has in the past. So, you know, is it an unreasonable, you know, or unsafe entrance and exit there? Compared to what's already on that street, mm -hmm. I can't see. I can't think that a, that if we asked for a formal traffic study with mm -hmm. count, etc., it would it would give us more information. But we'd still probably be in the same place, right? And yep. and, and that's just how I feel about it. You know, you look yep. at other places. I mean, it's really hard to pull out of uh, one Greenfield Road, the Dunkin' Donuts. Mm -hmm. And, and and that was, you know, that's in that, mm -hmm. yep. and that's busy corridor, a lot busier because mm -hmm. you have both the 116 and, and the 5 and 10 traffic mm -hmm. there. Okay. So I can't see this driveway as, uh, as though it may not make sense to some people as mm -hmm. being unsafe or unfit for that location. Mm -hmm. Rich, you have anything to question? I just feel a few pieces. Doesn't basically doesn't need a traffic study mm -hmm. because it fits within their guidelines. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm absolutely for it. I feel like they met the requirements that we ask of them um, enough so that we are following our bylaws mm -hmm. and that we feel like we're going in it with a little bit more information to make our decision to protect mm -hmm. ourselves as well. Mm -hmm. I I think it's really unfortunate. I feel like. Uh, the two parties want different things, but it's not something that we can clear up. Right. We just okay, have to we have to just I'm decide not. what makes sense yeah. for uh, what the power that we have. Mm -hmm. So, and I and I guess I I feel the same way. I mean, they've provided us with what we've asked. I don't like how the whole procedure played out. Me neither. Yeah. I think it was let's build something and then get permission afterwards. Um, and then to say you didn't know that that's the procedure, I don't know. But on the other hand, we're stuck in the middle of a, a disagreement. Okay. But and we there's certain decisions we can make. Right. And the other we, right. The other stuff right. we can. The so. only thing I would want to do is put a, a restriction on if any new development goes into the industrial. A condition. Park, okay. A condition that on the special um, permit. Okay. That this this has to be revisited. And I think something a little more detailed would have to be a, a more detailed traffic study would have to be done because if there's more in and out because of that driveway that they really don't need, then there's going to be traffic concerns. Yeah, yeah. But we don't get to evaluate whether they need nope. it or not. That's not nope. up to us. Right. And it's you know, like the I, three sidewalks, mm -hmm. two sidewalks, or whatever. Right. right. Like I thought about it, you know, after I watched the first meeting, mm -hmm. you know, if both parties that are in the room today came and asked for that driveway, then the driveway would still be the same just because people are disagreeing about it. Mm -hmm. well, Is yeah. the safety different? Well, I'd feel more comfortable if they had a, a better uh, understanding with DDIC if they right. communicated no, I, and, and respected DDIC's position oh, being the, the landlords of the, in, the industrial yeah, and, park you know, rather, I just, than, rather than stick something down their throat. And, and I agree. Yeah. I mean, I think that Right. That absolutely. people that are in town need businesses need to do their due diligence mm -hmm. prior to building things and yep. check in with the town hall yep. Yep. and make sure that that things are followed. But at the end of the day, I can't say that that's a unsafe or un, 
No. no. Unusable driveway. I agree. No. Okay, I guess if, at this point, if there's no other comments, we can go to a vote. Okay. Um, for granting um, a special permit. Mitch, you? I agree. Bruce. Yes. And I will as well. Um, but I would like to put the condition on that if there's anything new in the industrial park, that this needs to be um, looked at again. And I really hope that they can get along with Dedek. Communicate so that we're not stuck in the middle of a quarrel. Yeah. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very for much. your time. Go back. So uh, this time there's no new business. Um, I don't see any uh, correspondence. So I'll make a motion to close the meeting at 7.30. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.